Hi guys, so with Lord Frost out and Liz Truss in, what do actual Brexiteers think? Yes, there are still some people who have the guts to defend Brexit. Well, here is Richard Tice, former member of Nigel Farage's Brexit party. He appeared on GB News to give his two cents on the new Brexit minister. Well, it seems that Brexiteers aren't very happy with Liz Truss, not with her per se, but with the fact that she hasn't given up her role as Foreign Secretary. Let's hear what Brexit expert Richard Tice had to say. Well, joining me now is Reform UK leader and co-founder of Leave.eu, Richard Tice. Richard, how do you feel about the resignation of Lord Frost? I mean, many of us considered him to be the right man, really, to oversee that job after all of the watering down and diluting of Brexit. Of what the hell? Sorry to interrupt so soon. What the hell is she talking about? The watering down? The diluting of Brexit? What the hell does that mean? Of course, we're MEPs together during the, the Theresa May era. Suddenly it felt like we had a man who yes. really wanted to do it the right way, all in, and he's gone. I know. I was really shocked and actually very sad because the truth is he understood the detail. And yes, he was involved in negotiating. We all knew that it wasn't perfect, but that was Theresa May's fault. Sorry, <laughs> it wasn't perfect. Richard Tice is somebody who was promoting Brexit right to the, right to the day of Brexit. Um, he was saying it was going to be perfect. He was saying it was wonderful. W you know, once we leave, we're going to become a great nation once again. We'll take back our sovereignty and all of this other crap. And then blaming Theresa May. Now, what he's doing here is he's following on from something Lord Frost himself said. So Lord Frost, during the negotiations for the withdrawal agreement, the oven ready deal, said everything's wonderful, signed the deal, fantastic, perfect for Britain. Then came the TCA, same story wonderful trade deal, fantastic for Britain. And then a few months later, while the ink was still drying on both of those, he said, um, we were, you know, we signed it under duress. Our hands were tied. The European Union pressured us. Um, we're not happy with it. We need to renegotiate it or open it up at least. And then that excuse didn't work. So he pulled out the old excuse of, it was not my fault, it was somebody else. Typical Tory, blame everyone else. So he bla so everything was perfect, and then it was Theresa May's fault. Not her directly, of course, her administration. But once again, blaming everyone else for your own mistakes. Because he didn't bother to read it. Or he agreed to things that he didn't have any intention of implementing. But here he is, he's now gone not actually just because of the way of the Northern Ireland Protocol negotiations, but also because of his concerns about the political direction of the government. That's a whole different story. But this appointment of Liz Truss as the lead negotiator is, in my view, a disaster. She's, she's the Foreign Secretary. She may be a great Foreign Secretary, but that cl covers the whole world. She's a very busy person. She's also, of course, Minister for Women and Equalities. So she's got a huge amount on her plate, and this requires total focus. Here I actually agree with um, Richard Tice, but I think the reason why she has so much on her plate is because Boris Johnson wants her to fail. Boris Johnson sees her as a rival, a rival for the position of Prime Minister. She's very popular within the party. She is regarded as Brexit Wonder Woman, <laughs> really. Yes, that's true, even though we've seen these trade deals as a disaster. But she's regarded as very popular, very... Uh, Prime Ministerial, potential Prime Minister uh, replacement for Boris Johnson. So Johnson is concerned about that. So what better way to deal with this rival than to hand them a poison chalice and to even make it worse? He's not making her just Brexit Minister. She's maintaining the position of Foreign Secretary. So it's really, it's impossible for her to, to fix this problem. Anyway, this problem cannot be fixed. Brexit is a disaster. That is why Lord Frost left. Not because of this wrong direction they, the government are going in or because of um, restrictions or whatever or tax rises. No, it's nothing to do with that. It's because he knows come January the 1st, things are going to come, become more and more difficult. Businesses are going to be saying, what the hell is going on here? Why aren't you helping us out? And he knows that he's going to get blamed for it. So best to leave now and let somebody else deal with the crap. My concern is that the EU will see this as a weak appointment, someone who is not prepared to walk away. And 
to walk away. We keep hearing this from Brexiteers. Walk away from what? Walk away from the agreement that's international? Walk away from the agreement that was signed into British law? What the hell are you talking about? And we know that if you're not prepared to walk away, as Theresa May wasn't, you end up being completely legged over by the EU. Whereas actually there were real concerns in the EU the Lord Frost was prepared to trigger Article 16. So, at the beginning, there was a concern at the beginning. But if you keep saying the same, if you keep saying I'm going to do X every week, <laughs> by the time you know we get to the end of the year, we don't believe you anymore. You know, there were a few on a few occasions I thought maybe Lord Frost may trigger Article 16. But if he kept saying it. Every, you know, on a monthly basis, we're going to trigger Article 16. We're going to trigger Article 16. We're ready to trigger it. The conditions have been met. And you keep saying it, then it becomes less of a threat. I think this is a weak appointment. There's clearly some politics in it. Boris is sort of, you know, he's trying to sort of suggest, I suspect, is he trying to put Liz Truss into a really difficult place where she might get something wrong and fail and therefore that sort of props him up a bit? Not quite sure, but, but in terms of the negotiations of this critical issue about the Northern Ireland Protocol, I think it's a weak appointment. I think the EU will see it as weak. They won't think that she's prepared to trigger Article 16. And I think that's very bad, not just for Northern Ireland, but actually also for the fishing negotiations. And uh, the minister underneath appointed Chris Heaton-Harris, look, a nice guy, but he's not a John Redwood. You know, he's not a Steve Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Baker, who's afraid of a piece of fabric. <laughs> yeah, that's what you need doing negotiations. Brexit hard man, Steve Baker. <laughs> Is this guy serious? Steve Baker, who's afraid of his own shadow. It's one of those sort of people who should have been appointed because that, from Boris's point of view, would have brought in people from the right of the party, someone a real true believers in a proper... True believers in the cult. Yeah, we need, like, you had David Davis. He was absolutely useless. Theresa May used David Davis because he was a Brexiteer. He arrived at the negotiations without a piece of paper or a pen. And then he folded. So that didn't work. So they brought in Lord Frost, who used to support being a member of the European Union. And he did a better job than David Davis. Now, it was still a disaster, but he did a better job than David Davis. So you want to go back to the David Davises? Lord, get rid of Lord Frost, get rid of Theresa, I'm um, sorry, uh, Liz Truss, put in R John Redwood <laughs> or Steve Baker. I, I would love to see Steve Baker do this. We'd actually see him fall apart within maybe even less time than David Davis did. These people are charlatans. They're fronts. They're not real. I don't even think that uh, Dave... Uh, Steve Baker actually believes in Brexit. He, he obviously seen it as something he can use as a platform. But this is an absolute joke. Now, will Liz Truss succeed? Of course she won't because you can't succeed with Brexit. Lord Frost understood that. Um, has Lord Frost resigned his position as a lord? Of course he hasn't. He has handed this poison chalice to somebody else, handed it back to Boris Johnson, and Boris Johnson handed it to Liz Truss, who... I don't know is going to, I don't know how long Liz Truss is going to last in her position because it's going to get to a stage where she's going to go, I can't do this. And she's going to resign the position of uh, Brexit minister and somebody else will be handed it. And that person will hand it off to somebody else. There have been about 40 resignations, ministerial resignations since the beginning of Brexit. Brexit has been such a success. So many people have resigned over it. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.